Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and today we're gonna to talk about a very important topic, male pattern baldness. No, wait, actually, actually that's a different video topic, but anyway, in the last three years and all the water cooling stuff that I've done, it's actually kind of surprising that I've never done a fittings guide. Well, I found it fitting that we go ahead and do that today. If you guys are like me, you probably have a very cluttered email inbox. Like, very, very cluttered. So I signed up for a service called Unroll Me, which actually helps me take control over my inbox once again. Using their roll-up and daily email digest, I can see only the subscriptions that are important to me and kind of block out the others that I'm not really all that interested in. In fact, I can even unsubscribe from all of those emails using a very easy to use single page, which gives me control over my inbox once again. Taking security very serious, they also use OAuth, which will keep your credentials nice and secure. And with their 45 day back scan from the moment you sign up, you're guaranteed not to miss a single subscription. So what are you guys waiting for? Take control of your inbox once again, head on over to unroll.me and sign up now. I mean, seriously. I, you have no idea what you're missing. The aim of today's video is not so much to cover all the fittings that are out there, but just the main ones. There's no way I could cover every fitting type that's available. Just to kind of put things into perspective, Bits Power, which is one of the major fittings companies out there, uh, has over 740 SKUs by itself. I'm, I'm not covering all that. Now the first thing you have to do before you can buy any fittings is you have to determine what type of tubing are you going to use. Now in the past, soft tubing, like this guy right here, was really the most common thing people used. It was very easy, it was plentiful, it was easy to mold and, and just move around wherever you needed it. I mean, it was very flexible, so you didn't have to have perfect runs like you would with something rigid tubing. Uh, which brings us to the next one, which would be rigid tubing. And these are the two major tubing types you're gonna find. Now, some people might be thinking right now, well, what about copper tubing? Copper tubing still falls under the category of rigid tubing and will use the same fittings as this. So for the sake of simplicity, let's just go ahead and refer to these as rigid tubing instead of PETG and acrylic and copper. Believe it or not, they, uh, copper actually comes in pretty much the same sizes as all of the plastics. So it makes it very simple to just kind of convert whatever material you're using to rigid tubing. Now, of all the different types of fittings that are out there, uh, a very small percentage of them actually have to do with connecting to the actual material itself. Now when it comes to connecting to these, you're gonna have a few different types, and you have to forgive me, one of them I don't have in front of me because I haven't used them in years, so I, I don't have one to show, but that would just be a simple barb fitting. Uh, barb fitting is just that. Uh, it's, it's short for Barbara. Now I can kind of demonstrate what a barb fitting is here by using one of the compressions, and what that is, is it's nothing more than just the little metal piece that kind of sticks out there and has a little, well, barb on it that will grab onto and actually hang onto the, the rubber itself. But basically the material will just fit over the barb and then you have to put a clamp on it or a zip tie or something to keep it from popping off. That would be a barb. Now moving up to the next step, you have what's called a compression fitting and that's what I'm holding right here. Now you've got a bunch of different compression fittings. You've got chrome, you've got copper, matte black, polished black, black chrome. I mean, tons of different colors out there. Not to mention, there's a ton of different brands. So compression fittings between themselves are not much different. All it means is that the actual tubing is gonna fit over the barb just like I already showed you. Now, if you take the compression end and you slide it over the other side, instead of having to use a clamp, the compression itself, as you turn this knob, we'll call it a knob, the compression fitting itself over the tube, it will start to clamp down on this tube and it won't let it pop off. Now that's all a compression fitting is. Now when it comes to soft tubing, you pretty much only need to buy compression fittings. And the reason for that is you can bend the tubing to get it all to fit into place. So the most cost effective way of doing your, your loop, if you're on a strict budget, is certainly gonna be soft tubing and by going compression fittings. Now what size fittings and what size tubing? Well, that's gonna depend on you. What I'm actually holding here is 3 8 by 5 8 I believe. And it's a pretty thick wall. In fact, that's what makes it so difficult to, uh, you know, put this tubing on the barb fitting is it's a very thick wall. But I prefer thick wall tubing over thin wall because you can get very tight bends on it. As you can see, it won't kink. The thinner the wall, 
the easier it is for the tubing to kink like it's doing right there and that will block off flow. Now there's nothing more I need to tell you about making it fit other than make sure that the tubing size that you have and the, and the fitting size is the same. So let's say you were running a half inch inner diameter, that's what the ID stands for, a half inch inner diameter by a three quarter inch outer diameter, you wanna make sure that your compression fitting is half inch by three quarters OD, or one slash two ID by three slash four OD. So as long as those two numbers match, then the fitting and the tubing is gonna match. So you don't have to really overcomplicate it, just overcomplicate, overcomplicate. I don't know. Now where things start to get a little bit more complicated is when you start using rigid tubing because there are different size rigid tubings just like on uh, the soft tubing you are going to have to make sure that your sizes match. Now there's really only three sizes when it comes to rigid tubing and they're always measured for the most part by outer diameter because that's the part that matters because the only type of fitting you're really going to use on these is a rigid compression fitting. It's very similar to the way the barb fitting works, only it has O-rings on, or the compression fitting for the soft tubing, it has O-ring on the outside that clamps down, and that's pretty much it. So nothing is going into the actual rigid tubing itself, it all has to do with the outer diameter. Now the three main sizes right now are half inch outer diameter, which is getting more popular because people want to fill up their big cases and use thick tube. You have your 13 millimeter outer diameter and 12 millimeter outer diameter. Now, believe it or not, that one millimeter makes a huge difference. In fact, these two right here, they would look identical, but they're not. In fact, I cannot use a 13 millimeter outer diameter on a 12 millimeter and vice versa. It simply won't work. Now I have here a few different compression fittings that you would find for uh, rigid tubing compressions. Now, for instance, let's go ahead and demonstrate to you why a 12 millimeter and a 13 millimeter are not interchangeable. So I have here once again a, this is a, an Alpha Cool compression fitting. I have Alpha Cool, I have Primo Chill, I have Bits Power. So there's, there's a lot of brands out there. Now when you separate the compression here, you are going to find that there are O-rings and things inside. These are what create your seal. And if these are not in place, your system is going to leak. You don't want to do that. Now you take your tube, this happens to be a 13 millimeter because this is a 13 millimeter fitting, and you put on your compression first. In this particular O-ring, or this particular fittings case, it's got an O-ring, and then it's got kind of a flat washer. Not all of them have that, so make sure you use whatever materials come with your fittings. Slide the O-ring over it, then slide the flat washer. There's also an O-ring on the inside here that's gonna seal against the tube. So you slide that bad boy in there, and then you can slide and tighten everything down. And then once everything is tightened into place, you get a seal, and things are not going to leak on you. So there we are, a happy camper with a 13 millimeter rigid fitting in place, nice and tight, nothing's gonna leak, we're good to go. Now one millimeter doesn't sound like a lot, but let's go ahead and try and do the same thing with the 12 millimeter tube. Now the moment I put the compression fitting over the 12 millimeter, you can already hear the difference. It's got lots and lots of play in there. The O-ring, slide that into place, the washer, and then we will slide this. Now, as you can already see, the inner O-ring on the 12 millimeter is not holding the tube, but the O-ring on the 13 millimeter holds that tube nicely. So if we were to try and put this together with the improper materials, well, that would be a bad day for your computer because it's gonna get wet. So I'm gonna crank this bad boy down. It is threaded all the way down. As you can see, it doesn't stay. So it's important to make sure you just measure the outer diameter rigid tubing, 12 millimeter or 13 millimeter. Now let's go ahead and talk about the different fittings to get things looking nice in your system. One of the most common things I'm asked, especially with the Skunk Works build log, is how I passed the fittings through the floor of my case. Well, I use this guy right here, and these are called bulkhead fittings or pass-through fittings. Now, basically, all this is single piece of metal that has a lot of threads that's drilled all the way through and threaded with G one quarter thread so that you can put fittings on either side of that. And then it's got a threaded outside here with a collar. So all you do is you drill a hole in the floor of whatever you want to pass through that matches the outer diameter of this, slide that through, put the locking collar on there, 
and then this will be sitting in the floor or the wall or whatever, and it's threaded. So all you have to do then is take your fittings, slide your fittings into place, and then just like anything else, you put your tubing on it and then you can pass through whatever it is you're trying to pass through. So it's just called a bulkhead or a pass-through fitting and you can use that to pass through anything, the wall, the back of your case, the floor of your case, the, you know, the ceiling, whatever you wanna do. Now when it comes to rigid tubing, you have two options when it comes to bending it. You heat it and bend it like you've seen me do in all my, my build blogs, or you can get uh, these 90 degree bends. You've got 45 degree bends like this guy here. And then you've also got these, uh, well, there are 90 bend that has compression fittings already built into it. So this is actually a more cost effective way uh, of doing the bends if you're not going to heat and bend because the fittings are already built into the fitting. And this is one of the things that uh, Bits Power has been doing is adding a lot more custom fittings like this so that it doesn't get expensive where you have to buy two compressions for either side or one for either side and then have the 90 like this guy here. See how this guy only has the threads? This already has the compression built into it. So then all you do is you, you take your tube and uh, you know you put it through and then you can do your bends like this. This is the way that all the bends were done on the Parvin build. And that's why the Parvin build's water cooling setup was stupidly expensive because I think there was something like 33 fittings in that, in that build. So that really is a quick way of adding cost to your system. Now the cool thing too about a lot of these 90s, especially with these dual rotaries, is the fact that they can rotate. So I'm gonna put two of these chrome ones together here just to kind of, actually they're nickel plated, but just to kind of demonstrate that these can bend and rotate into different positions. So if you put together a series of these, you can, you know, you can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. Some people have even done entire systems where the entire loop is done in fittings and not tubing, and that can get very, very expensive, but people have definitely done it. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is how I do the drain system, because a lot of people have asked how I do the, the standalone drain system. And the way I typically do that is I'll get a drain valve, and all this is is a ball check valve. That's all it is. Where, in fact, this one's stiff, there we go. When it's open like this, water can flow through it. When you close that T-valve, it closes a little ball in there, has nylon seals, and then water can't flow through it. So what I do is I'll take something like this guy here, which is a, it's just a uh, multi-fitting valve here where it's got an inlet. So that's where it'd be coming in from the pump or something like that. And you've got all these different options here for outlets. And what I'll typically do is I will just take something like this, which is a double-ended male fitting, slide it into, slide, screw it. I'm gonna screw this fitting, I'm gonna screw the hell out of this fitting. And then attach my valve. So let's say this end is coming out of the pump, that end is going to, you know, maybe a piece of tube, or maybe I even just put a little plug on there and, and use that specifically for uh, my drain. And then we can have, you know, the other side going off to, you know, wherever, the graphics card or the CPU, et cetera, et cetera. So this guy is going off and doing his own thing. And then we just plug up the other ones. And then there we go. Now, the way I actually do my drains is I'll have the plug or I'll have the, the valve just sitting here plugged off with the valve closed so that fluid can't go through it. That way, when I take off the plug, nothing comes out. And then when I'm ready to drain, I'll take an extra piece of tube like this with a fitting on the end, undo that plug, screw this guy on, and then I can have this going into a bottle or something like that. And then when I open up this little valve, then everything just flows out into the bottle or whatever that I want. When I'm done, I close off the valve and then I can just unscrew my, my drain plug or my drain tube here, put the cap back on and we're done. So that's the way that I do my drains. The hard part is finding the right place to put this in your system. This needs to be at the lowest point of your system, otherwise you're not gonna get it to drain properly. It's also helpful if you have a radiator with multiple fittings or a reservoir that has multiple fittings on the top so that you can unplug a fitting at the top so air can come in to push down the fluid, otherwise it takes a long time to drain. So that's the way that I do my drain fittings. So there we go, guys, that's it. That's the way that I do fittings. I don't really use anything more than what you see right here, even though there's 700 something different types of fittings on the market. Uh, but you know, there's custom fittings for everything, every need, and no matter what, you always would have the right fitting. You just have to kind of think ahead, plan ahead, and determine, okay, 
Take, you can take a picture of your system and get in there with Photoshop or you know Windows Paint or whatever and just kind of draw lines where you think the tubes would go and everywhere there's a bend, determine. Am I going to bend the tube? Am I, do I have soft tubing? Or am I going to use a, a fitting like this? And every time you do that, you can then determine, okay, we need a 90 here, we need a 90 here, we need a 45 here, and then you kind of get an idea of how many fittings that you need. It's always a good idea to order a couple more uh, than you think you need and have them as spares, which may sound cost ineffective, but the reality is that you are going to likely need more than you think you do, and it's a good thing to have it just in case. So I hope this has helped explain a little bit more when it comes to fittings. This is by no means an in-depth, all-inclusive you know, all fittings guide, uh, but it, are, it is talking more about the fittings that I use, how I use them, and just some of the con uh, conceptual ideas that I do or I use when I build my systems. So there we go, guys. Jay's Two Cents. Hope this has helped. That's why I do these videos. I want them to help strengthen that community, especially the water and cooling community. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.